Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa qa'idina wa sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yamdahi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma ya arham ar-Rahimin iftah alayna fatuh al-arifun. يا ربنا يا ربنا علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا ارحم الراحمين <coughs> Today in sha Allah we will talk about a female companion of the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a male companion The female companion is Umm Ruman and our male companion is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Let's start and see how these companions were recorded into history. What we know about them, what, what we can learn about them. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Umm Umar, Umm Ruman, sorry. Umm Ruman here, uh, Zainab bint Amir bin Waymir. Ibn Abdi Shams ibn Attab ibn Uzayna. Zainab was raised in Sarat in the Arabian Peninsula, and she married a young man from her tribe named Ibn Harith. And uh, she had a son from him. They were a happy couple. Uh, then they moved to Mecca. Abdullah, her husband, became the partner and the good friend of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an. Soon after they moved, Abdullah passed away. And Zainab was widowed and she had her son and they were left with no support. So seeing her condition, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu an married her. This was one of the merits of the uh, uh, people at that time that a widow is to get married as soon as possible. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Umm Ruman had uh, Sayyida Aisha who became the wife of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Umm Ruman was the mother-in-law of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This woman was uh, a beautiful woman and she, she was known with uh, uh, Siddiq. She was known with uh, truthfulness. She was known with uh, um, being a good wife, um, an eloquent uh, lady, um, so she was a very good uh, lady. Now, Umm Ruman learned about Islam. And she was from the very beginning of those uh, of people who, from the prominent peoples who accepted Islam in the very early days in Mecca. So she swore alliance to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and then migrated with the group uh, of immigration. They went to Habasha and then they went to Medina. And we all know that uh, uh, Umm Ruman was, as I just mentioned, a very good wife. And she was a very good uh, support to her husband. So she would see him do whatever he can for the sake of Allah, and she would help him with that. She would, uh, she would help him in uh, his zeal, how he can help, how he can uh, be uh, <clears throat> the closest to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she was, in, an, in addition to that, she was a, uh, a very good mom. She brought up her children, Abdurrahman and Aisha, the best, the best of 
uh, uh, Raisa. She was a very good mother. So Sayyidina, <coughs> Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an, was known to be a Siddiq because of his uh, complete Iman and belief to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with whatever he would say. Um Ruman also was the, uh, a very good support to her husband even in this. She was a very good uh, support to her, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also. So the, uh, uh, when uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam settled in uh, Medina, he uh, asked Khawla uh, bint uh, Hakim to go to Um Ruman to ask her that Sayyidina Muhammad is interested in Aisha radiallahu anha. And when Khawla radiallahu anha uh, came to Um Ruman, she said, Ma atkhalallahu alaykum min al khayri wal baraka. What a great thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. What a blessing, what good thing that you have you, you, you are getting. So she said, what's that? And Khawla radiallahu anha said, Arsalani Rasulullahi akhtubu ilayhi Aisha. I'm here uh, to, to see, to, to ask the hand of Aisha. He wants to marry Aisha. So Umruman radiallahu anha was very happy for that news. And she said, inshallah, that would be uh, a good, uh, the best thing that we will have. But we will, I, will, I will talk to Abu Bakr. And when uh, Abu Bakr came back, she, she told him, Ya Abu Bakr, ماذا أدخل الله عليكم من الخير والبركة? So uh, he, asked, uh, he asked, what is that? And she said, My, uh, the messenger of Allah sent me to uh, ask you that he wants to get married to Aisha. And uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr said for a second, and he said, can he marry, marry her and she is his niece? Because they were considered uh, brothers, Sayyidina Muhammad and uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. So she went back to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she told him what uh, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, go back and tell him, قولي له أنت أخي في الإسلام وابنتك تحل لي. Tell him, you are my brother in Islam and I can marry your daughter. And by this, Umm Ruman radiallahu anha was the mother-in-law to the best of the creatures. Now, if we want to talk a little bit about uh, the relationship of the mother-in-law to her brother-in-law, to her son-in-law, I'm sorry. So, when someone comes to marry your daughter, consider this man as a king who is going to treat you, your daughter as a queen. And treat him well. Be good to your son-in-law. Ignore so many things that you might see here and there. If you were not addressed to say something about an issue, do not start it. Do not talk about it. So be the example, follow the example of Umm Ruman to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So many problems happen between a husband and a wife. And with a word, everything is fixed up. Everything is okay back again. Everything is good. So now, when things happen like this, the, the relationship between the husband and the wife always is solved by a... Uh, Love. So a word might solve a whole big issue, but if the parents know about this thing, they will have one hold against that, that son-in-law. And when things are big enough, 
then there will be so many problems between the in-laws and the, the son-in-law. And the same thing about the daughter-in-law. So both should be treated as a real son and as a real daughter. So this was Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Umm Ruman. And what happened, we all know the story, uh, the incident of uh, uh, when Haditha uh, al-Ifq, the incident of slander when uh, uh, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha was accused of doing something haram. So the story, the, the, the group of munafiqeen who, who seemingly uh, believed in God, but not actually believe. So they, they would say we are believers, but they would not be believers. So they looked for an opportunity to disturb Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. So they resorted all kinds of... Uh, uh, all kinds of methods to attain their aims. They even slandered the privacy of the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they acted arrogantly, they acted meanly to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this incident is the slander by the head, the, the leader of the munafiqeen, the leader of the, number, uh, the hypocrites, against Aisha radiallahu anha. So, uh, normally Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would take one of his wives uh, with each expedition he would go to. And this time, it was the expedition of Bani al-Mustalaq and his wife Aisha went with him. And listen to the story how, how Aisha radiallahu anha narrates it. She said, I was on an expedition with the messenger of Allah. And this expedition took place after the verse of hijab was sent down. So she was carried in a kind of a chair on a camel. She was light. So when they hold the chair, it was not heavy. So she was put on her, in the chair and the people in charge lifted the chair up and put it on the camel. And she said, we traveled like that. Now listen to her. She said, when we approached Medina, we stopped somewhere for a break. And we, we spent some time for some time, uh, some part of the night there. Then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered to set up. When the order to move was given, I left the army alone to, look, to relieve myself. After that, I went near the camel I had, uh, I had ridden. And I, uh, when I got there, I checked my chest and I noticed that my necklace was lost. And that necklace was, was gifted to her by her mom, Um Ruman. So she said, I went back to look for my necklace. However, while I was looking for it, uh, I missed the army. I thought those uh, who had joined the expedition would never, would never leave before, before checking that I was in my chair. So when those uh, who served me, uh, they, they thought that I was in the chair. So when they when lifted the chair up to put it in the camel, they did not notice that I was not there. And I was not a heavy woman. Uh, so they did not notice that I am not on that camel. And they moved. So she found, she found her necklace and she returned to the place to find that there is no one there. What she did, she went back to the place where she had, uh, where she uh, was looking for her uh, necklace. So she wrapped herself and uh, fell asleep. Safwan ibn al was one of the Sahaba who, was, who always stayed behind the army and checked if they left something if, uh, so that he, he could uh, take it back to the army. So around the morning time, Safwan came to the place where she was 
And uh, he noticed a sleeping person. So he said, Inna lillahu wa inna ilayhi rajiun. She woke up hearing him and uh, she told him what happened. So he got his camel, made it, uh, uh, made it sit, and uh, he stepped to the front and asked uh, Aisha radiallahu anha to mount the camel. And she did. And he took her back to the army, uh, which, uh, which stopped for the next break before getting uh, back home. And uh, they, they caught the, uh, the group. And while Safwan radiallahu anhu was bringing Aisha on the camel, they were seen by Abdullah ibn Abi Salul. So the leader, uh, that was the leader of the, uh, of the hypocrites. And he said, who is that person? And they told him, she's Aisha. So Abdullah, uh, that, uh, that leader, wanted to make use of this simple incident. So he expressed his evil intentions. And he said, uh, by God, neither Aisha nor that man will be acquitted of this incident, and he accused them of doing some shame, some uh, shameless things. He uttered many other uh, mean sentences, and the rumor soon spread among the soldiers of the of the army. Aisha, radiallahu anha, did not did not hear that, and nobody told her. So when they arrived, Medina, she was sick, and she had a fever for almost a whole month and the people of the medina were told were all talking about the slander but she did not know anything about it the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alaihi wasallam he uh, uh, with her parents had also heard about it but they did not say anything to aisha radiallahu anha they concealed the whole thing from her so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come in, look at her, and he would say, how is the patient? Then he would leave. Aisha was worried about this attitude of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but she did not know the reason. One day she wanted to uh, relieve herself, and there were no, no bathrooms in the, in the uh, no restrooms in the houses. So she would go out a little bit away. So uh, she was with uh, a, a, a one of the women. Her name was Umusla. So one, uh, one night she, wa- she went with uh, Umusla. To, uh, to relieve herself. And when she suddenly, a mustah tripped, and she said, Ta'isa mustah. And this was a special phrase of curse that would be said between uh, people. So Aisha radiallahu anha said, Oh, mustah, why did you curse your son? And she said to her, I cursed him due to what he said against you. And she said, What did he say again about me? And Um Mustah told Aisha radiallahu anha the slander. She could not uh, 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 hold it. And she started to cry and cry. And she came home and her illness uh, started again. And uh, one day the the messenger uh, of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the house and greeted them. And he said, how is your patient? So even it hurt her that that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not even mentioning her name. So she was suffering a lot, and she asked him, "Ya Rasulullah, I want to go to my mother's house," and he agreed. So she went there, and uh, a few days later, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came came to came to them. And, uh, of course, now her mother and father knew that she knows now. So they could not help crying. They could not do anything. And uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to them. And, again, he would see her crying and crying. So... 
there was no wahi, no revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad wanted to uh, uh, consult his companions what to do. It has been over a month now. This, this, everyone is talking about it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not revealed anything uh, in this regard. So Sayyidina Umar said to Rasulullah, Oh, Messenger of Allah, this is a big slander. I definitely know that uh, it is a lie, a lie of those hypocrites. God protected you even from flies. It, is it possible that God will not protect your family from such, a, from s- such disgrace? Also, Sayyidina Osman said something very beautiful and nice uh, about uh, how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected, uh, protected uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, will, he assured him that uh, 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 he will protect the honor of the family and so on. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to uh, to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, and after greeting them, he looked at Aisha radiallahu anha and he said, "O oh, Aisha, I have heard such and such things about you. If you are free of and away from those accusations, God will state that you are free. However, if you have committed such a sin, ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa taala. Repent. When a slave of Allah confesses his sins." Uh, Allah will treat him with mercy. Aisha radiallahu anha with a broken heart said, when the messenger, when the messenger of God ended his words, she, she, she teared. She, she said, uh, yani how he looked, she looked at her father and she said, father, answer him. And he didn't. He said, oh, my daughter, by God, I don't know what to say to the messenger of Allah. And she turned to his mother, to her mother, and her mother said the same thing. So she said, by God, I know you have heard these rumors and you look, you look as if you know you, you have, you have believed them. So if I were to tell you that I am not guilty, God knows that I am not, you would not believe me. And if I were to tell you I did something bad, God knows that I did not, you would readily believe me. So she said, the only thing I will say, the only thing I will say, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ Patience is almost fitting. Allah is the one sought for help against what, 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 what you described. She had great faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help her because she, she knows that she would never do anything to unplease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is just enough to show everyone that uh, she, she was uh, free and clear of these accusations. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed uh, ayahs down and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at Aisha and said, glad tidings of Aisha. God acquitted, acquitted you and stated that you were free and away from that slander. So Abu Bakr and Umm Ruman became very happy. Now imagine, imagine Umm Ruman she was crying, crying for her daughter. She knows, she knows who she raised. She knows who Aisha is. She did not say a word out of politeness, out of respect to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam. So in return, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam respected her a lot. And this is how, again, the relation between the mother-in-law and the son-in-law, the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law should be complete respect, love, caring. So this was the story of Aisha radiallahu anha and how her beloved mother 
dealt with it very wisely. She would comfort her daughter and she would assure her that Allah would not leave her. So in the six years of Hijrah, Umm Ruman radiallahu anha passed away. Um, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went down to her grave, made dua for her and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant her forgiveness. So this was Umm Ruman, the wife of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. The woman whom Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described by, uh, by saying, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ إِلَى مْرَأَةٍ مِنَ الْحُورِ الْعِينِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ إِلَى أُمِّ رُمَانِ Anyone who wants to know what a huri looks like, and we know that the huri is a woman uh, who will accompany the faithful Muslim believers in paradise. So Sayyidina Muhammad said, anyone who wants to know what a huri looks like should look at Umm Ruman. This was Umm Ruman, radiyallahu anha. Now we move, inshallah, to Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, about whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave so much good, good uh, information and, and he loved, Sayyidina Muhammad loved Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was a person who loved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much. He was so close to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If people were asked to leave Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is always permitted. If people are away, he is there. So how, how did uh, uh, this relation happen? So we'll go back from a little bit and we will see that. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is a person who, who is thin, uh, very weak, uh, who is short, who is uh, uh, dark colored, he is uh, uh, very weak, he's from uh, Huzayl, but he lived in Mecca. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, gave him the name Ab- Aba Abd al-Rahman. He was very generous, he would dress always so nicely and he would have lots of uh, 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 perfume. And if he is passing by, then he would be known that he passed from this area, even if people did not see him because just of the perfume that he has. What was special about him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised this person because of the Quran, because of his love to the Quran. He was very smart. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was of the, of the very uh, uh, early time at the, um, of the people who embraced Islam at, uh, at the very beginning. And his uh, story of how he became a Muslim is really a nice one. He says, I used to um, uh, go with the uh, sheep uh, to graze the sheep of uh, uh, Uqba ibn Abi Ma'id. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and Abu Bakr uh, passed by and they asked me, hey boy, is there any, any milk? And he said, yes, there is. But I cannot give you. It's not mine. It's for my master. And I cannot give you from this milk. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, do you have any, any sheep that uh, does not um, give milk? He said, yeah, here, here is one. So Sayyidina Muhammad uh, wiped the uh, sheep, uh, the uh, um, uh, thudder, and it gave so much uh, milk. So he drank, he made Abu Bakr drink, and then the Abdullah bin Saud was so, so impressed with what he has seen. So he came to Sayyidina Muhammad later on. He asked about him and he came to him and he said to him, 
yeah, uh, teach me, teach me. And he became a Muslim and he said, he said, teach me of the, uh, of the Quran. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, put his hand on his head and he said, إِنَّكَ غُلَامٌ مُعَلَّمٌ You will be a, a, a boy of knowledge. You will, you will have lots of knowledge. So that was the uh, meeting between uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So as soon as uh, uh, he, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him about the uh, uh, Islam, of course, he became a Muslim. So from that day, he started to be always with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would never leave him. And he was the best to recite the Quran after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one day, uh, the companion said, um, uh, Quraysh did not hear the Quran yet. Is there anyone who can uh, do that? So Ibn Mas'ud just said, stood up and he said, I am going to do it. I'm going to go to Quraysh while they are meeting around the Kaaba and I'm going to recite the Quran. So he did. And he read as much as he could from Surah Al-Rahman. So he was the first one to make the non-believers listen to the Quran. أول من جهر بالقرآن. So the people, the Qurayshis people, they looked at themselves and they said, "What, what is, he, what is Ibn Mu'ab say? What is he saying?" And they, they, he be, he, uh, he kept uh, reciting the Quran loudly, and they were so angry, and they started to hit him, to hit him a lot, until he came back to his companions, and he was uh, bruised everywhere on his face, and uh, he did not care. So they said, oh, oh, Abdullah, this is what we were scared that will happen to you. He said, Wallahi ma kana a'da'ullahi qattu ahwanu alayya minhum al-an. They are not a problem to me. Wala in shi'tum ghadaytum bimithliha ghadan. Ghadaytuhum bimithliha ghadan. And if you want, I will do the same tomorrow. They said, no, no, no. You only, you already, you already made them hear what, what made them angry. So Sayyidina, Sayyidina Abdullah was a great person, a great companion. He was so brave. In uh, Ghazwat Badr, he was, uh, uh, he helped uh, the companions to kill uh, Abu Jahl. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him his uh, sword uh, on Ghazwat Badr. And in Ghazwat Uhud, he was also very brave. He stood fast. He, uh, he came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to defend him. And he was, he was, uh, he had a very good, special, close relationship with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, as I mentioned, what may the, the best merit for uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was the Quran. That was his, uh, 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 his uh, amazing character that he enjoyed. So his recitation would touch the heart. And that's why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to, to tell him Read, istaqritni. Or he, is, uh, he would say, istaqra'ani nabi. So uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallam would ask him to read Quran for him. And he would say, Ya Rasulullah, aqra'u wa, wa, wa alayka unzil. Would I read it and it was revealed to you? He said, I would love to hear the Quran from someone other than me. And he used to love to listen to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud reciting. And he used to say, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يُقْرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ, أن يقرأ القرآن رَتْبًا كَمَا أُنْزِلْ فَلْيَقْرَأُهُ عَلَى قِرَاءَةِ أُمِّ عَبْدِ عَلَى قِرَاءَةِ 
Ibn Umm Abd. So if anyone wants to read the Quran exactly as it was revealed, he, he should read it the same way that Ibn Umm Abd reads it, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, how he reads it. SubhanAllah, so uh, this was uh, his position. This was his uh, rank with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let's take this moment and talk a little bit about the Quran. Different emotions can affect different people. How? When you hear the reciter, a few ayahs might be recited to an audience. Some will get affected. They would feel that these ayahs are talking about them. They would feel that themselves within the ayahs. They would shed tears. And others might not be touched at all. So this is the status of the heart. The Quran is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you want to receive them, you want to receive them with an open heart. So the heart does not have, if the heart does not have the love of the dunya, then it will be immediately affected when it, re, when it hears the Quran. So there are steps to get connected to the Quran. First of all, take baby steps. And later on, you will be able to have big leaps. Assign yourself five minutes a day. If you, if you don't read the Quran at all, just assign five minutes. Then later, when you find yourself, you are, you are able to do more, make them 10 minutes. And after that, you will feel that your heart starts to get connected to the Quran and you want to do more and more. And when, you're, when you read the Quran, try to understand the meanings of the ayahs you are reciting. Learn the proper pronunciation. Learn the tajweed rules one at a time. Practice it and then move to another rule. Remember, the more effort you put in learning the Quran, the higher the reward is. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, such a person who recites the Quran fluently will be with the noble righteous scribes in heaven. And such a person who exerts himself to learn the Quran and recites it with great difficulty will have a double reward. So don't say, I don't know how to recite. I'm not going to uh, do it. No, do it. And you will, you will find it difficult at the beginning. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't let the shaitan whisper to you that you cannot do it or you are doing mistakes or you will, you will get bad deeds because you are doing mistakes. Don't listen to these, to these whisperings. Just follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Read, get connected to the words of Allah. If you have a letter, a letter from a very dear, close uh, friend, you would read it once, twice, three times. But this is the word of Allah. After that, you would get bored of that letter. But with the words of Allah, you will feel that yourself want to read one khatam after the other, after the other, and each and every khatam you learn something new, either a word. Uh, a tashkil word that you used to read it wrongly or you would understand something or Allah will give you the light of opening for for an ayah special ayah or you will so so many things will happen to you when you are connected to the Quran try to get the obstacles that hinder you from from learning the Quran 
Get rid of arrogance, get rid of loving of this dunya, get rid of loving of anything that controls your heart other than, the, other than the love of Allah, the love of the messenger of Allah, and the love of the book of Allah. Empty your heart. Imagine your heart as a cup that is filled up with love of dunya, wealth, cars. And you want to fill this, this uh, heart, this cup with with the light, with more, but there is no space for it. So the first thing to do is to empty this heart, to clean it, and then fill it up. And this is what we should all do. We want to empty our hearts from any love related to dunya. We want to, the dunya to be in our pockets, not in our hearts. So our hearts should be clean and ready to receive the divine light. And when you are learning the Quran, listen to a reciter. This will help you a lot to improve your recitation. When you listen, when you have the light now, you have to apply these ayahs that you are reciting. It's not just the words that we are learning. No, we want to implement these words in our life. Sayyidina Umar used to learn a few ayahs, apply them fully, and then learn the next few ayahs. So when you read the Quran and you, you read, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, or you who believe, just listen carefully to what is coming after it. Imagine, imagine that the Quran is addressing you. There are things you have to do and things you have to be away from. So, B, try to have a good relation with the Quran. Empty your heart to be able to have this good relation. So Sayyidina, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was the person of Quran. And after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everybody recognized his uh, position because they knew how Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to talk about him, how he was so close to Sayyidina Muhammad. وسلم. Everybody witnessed his wara, his taqwa. Taqwa. What is taqwa? A taqwa and ta'bud Allah can get a raf in Lemyakuna raf in the Wirak. That's part of Ihsan. At-taqwa, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, At-taqwa ha huna, and he, and he points to his heart. Always have in mind that Allah is with you. Allahu ma'i, Allahu naziri, Allahu hadiri, Allahu shahidi. Allah is with me, witnessing every single action we are doing. We cannot, we cannot. Have Allah look at us and he sees that we are doing a bad deed. What if someone dies doing a bad deed? Then that, that one will, will, will cause his uh, wretchedness in the day after. So this was Sayyidina, uh, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Another thing about him, he used to, to uh, always blame himself. This is what we should all say. Every night, Sayyidina Omar used, what, what did he used to do? He used to, before he sleeps, he would scale his deeds of the day. What did I do? What did I say? Where did I, what, what did I look at? What did I listen to? Where did I go? Who did I hurt with my tongue? Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud used to once mounted a safa and he put his tongue, he pointed at his tongue and he said, Ya lisan qul khayran taghnam, waskat, waskat an sharrin taslam min qabli an tandam. So he, he is talking to his tongue 
saying, say good, you will be a winner. Say, stop of saying anything bad, then you will be saved before you feel sorry. So remember, when a word is said, you cannot take it back. You will, you will wish that, oh my God, I did not say this word. You might break the heart of people because of a word that you might regret forever. So incidents might happen and you might say, I wish I didn't say what I said. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about that and he said, وَهَلْ يُكَبُّ النَّاسُ فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ So these tongues are the reasons for people to be in hellfire. كَلِمَةٌ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا تَهْوِي بِهِ سَبْعِينَ خَرِيفًا فِي جَهَنَّمْ A person would say just word and he would not care about it or he did not he did not mean it, mean it يعني, in a bad way but it it will be a punishment for him it will be a big punishment he broke hearts of people so this was sayyidna abdullah ibn mas'ud this was uh, the lesson we got so many lessons from today's sahaba this is how we should uh, follow. This is why we should follow these luminaries, these stars that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about and uh, praised. When he said, Ashabi kan nujum bi'ayyihum uhtadaytum uhtadaytum. My companions are like the stars. Whoever you follow, you will be guided. One day, a person came to Sayyidina Abu Mas'ud, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and he said to him, I saw in my dream the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a high uh, place, and you are, and he is talking to you, and he said, come to me. Mm-hmm. It's so, it has been so long. So Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud knew that it was his death, and it was just a few years after that, uh, a few, uh, sorry, a few days after that dream, and he passed away. So this was Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Mas'ud, who will always be remembered when Surah Al-Rahman is recited. He was the first to get the people of Quraysh, the non-believers, to learn or to hear the Quran for the first time. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته